Hello. Well, I was given this Philips N1700 VCR format video recorder recently. And I powered it up in my last video and the clock worked. That's good news. That means that the regulator I see that often fails uh, is working fine. Uh, and I believe also that it has at least some good drive belts in it because the head was spinning, which is a good sign too. So uh, let's see if we can uh, fix this machine. What I'm going to do is just try a few of the basic things to get it running. If it's going to start taking a lot of time, then I'll pause, I'll take the head drum out, and I'll fit that into a known good working N1700 to test the heads, because I don't want to spend too much time on it if it turns out that the heads are faulty. So anyway, let's get stuck in. So when we left this, the situation was that when it powers up, the clock works, and when the cassette carriage is, in, uh, is, is installed, then the head drum spins and the... Uh, real motor spin. So let's uh, power it up again. So that's a flashing clock. And you can hear the drum spinning and the uh, motors are spinning. So, and it won't shut down. So probably it's trying to unlace and doesn't think it's quite managed to do so. Although, normally if it couldn't unlace, it wouldn't allow me to uh, eject this, so that's a little odd. But uh, let me um, take a look at where the mechanism is. Well, the screw's missing from here, which can cause these keys to miss the micro switches, so that will need a screw fitting in there. But we'll look in here. Uh, make sure everything's lubricated properly in here and I'll look at the loading motor. What I think I'll do is I'll set you up so you can look down on the mechanism and, and get a better view. For those of you who are not familiar with this kind of mechanism, uh, used on the 1502 and 1700 machines from Philips, this is the servo panel that's been swung out the way. That's the play button, or start as they call it, and that's record. This is the uh, loading motor which there's two variants of this. This is the later type. Uh, this rotates the base here um, and these guides rotate around to wrap the tape around the head drum. So this is the head drum. It's enormous, isn't it? Uh, the mechanism is, is a purely mechanical affair, so you uh, operate it with the piano keys and lubrication issues are quite common around these uh, levers here. It's a concentric uh, arrangement here for the uh, supply and take-up spool. So the tape starts on the bottom, goes round here, and then winds its way up onto the top. Uh, pinch roller is fairly ordinary, uh, and capstan there, um, audio control head here. Now, uh, there's the raise head. Uh, what can often happen is it fails to fully unlace or lace or could be trying to do one or the other so we'll check that this motor can do that. Um, I might uh, actually disconnect the supply wires and connect a supply to this and manually operate that. I think that's a good way to make sure that the uh, loading motor is, is in good working order. We'll give that a whirl I think actually. I don't remember what the polarity is for lace and unlace, so we'll experiment with that. And I also don't remember what the voltage is, but it's going to be in the order of about 6 volts. Uh, I would like, of course, to disconnect the uh, supply voltage first from the machine, because I'm going to blow anything up. Right, I've disconnected one of the motor terminals here, the blue one. So with the red wire still in place, that doesn't matter, because I'm not going to have any voltages going through the machine. I can uh, try powering this motor and see what happens. Right, it's lacing. It's obviously a bit low voltage, but that's fine. I think it's fully laced now. Let's uh, go the other way for unlace. So that mechanism seems to be working. I think I'm still running at slightly low voltage. The mechanism looks to be working properly.
there are some micro switches here that detect when it's in the laced and unlaced positions and I'm going to test those briefly now with a multimeter. Right, that's in the end position there is made. And this is in the closer position is made. That's with it fully uh, unlaced, I believe. Let's go the other way. And confirm that they've switched over. That's still in the end position. That one switched over. In the intermediate location there, okay, this one has this close set made. And this one is still stuck on these end ones. So whatever position the deck's in, this one doesn't change. That doesn't sound right, does it? I believe now that this one should be activated, and it's not. So uh, I think I'm going to take this one off and have a look at it. So the switch is working fine, it's that the actuator is not being controlled properly. I have actually found these switches themselves to be quite reliable. So something's not pushing on this when it should be. And it'll be this part here that's not, this lever here is not going that way enough. It appears that that is not quite reaching that point the unlace. So probably part of this mechanism is slightly jamming and is not allowing that slider to go all the way. Right, let's uh, lubricate this part of the mechanism then. I've got it into the fully laced position now and if I push this down, which has the same effect as uh, closing the carriage, I can select fast forward or wind, start, which is play, and that engages the pinch roller, and rewind. So the mechanism is um, okay in the laced position, but it's not getting into the fully unlaced position. Is it fully unlaced now? No, still not activated that micro switch. Need to find out why it's not getting fully unlaced. I could adjust the micro switch slightly so that it saw that it was fully unlaced, but I think it's further out than I can adjust. I don't think it's uh, completing the unload cycle quite, quite enough. Mechanically, it does seem to be there, it's just this switch is not activated. And how much further does it need to go to activate it? Just that much. Uh, maybe I should move the switch slightly if it'll let me. Well, it's activated now, so we can try it, I think. I can reconnect the motor. Yeah, there's a bit missing from the bracket underneath here, so I'll have to fit a nut and bolt or some other workaround to uh, strap this down properly. If you don't, 
then that can ride above these actuators from the buttons and uh, cause weird faults. OK, with the motor reconnected and something lashed up here to hold the PCB in place, I think we're positioned that we can first just power it up and confirm that it uh, doesn't continuously make motor running noises now. That's laced and laced. Right, we can put a tape in here and see if we can mechanically get it to run. So, on, fast forward, rewind, not much rewind, you can see it's sort of trying but failing, and start or play. Okay, so we need to work on the rewind, but uh, not too bad worth connecting a TV to this. It doesn't have AV connectors on it yet, uh, but if we get it working it sure will later. So uh, let's hook it up to a TV and see if we get a picture. Okay, this TV is set to where, uh, tuned in to where it was last used with an N1700 video recorder, but of course this modulator could be on a slightly different frequency, so it's quite likely to not match, but let's see what we get. Right, that's not tuned in. Um, we try and tune the TV into the video, or try and set the modulator of the video recorder to match the TV. I think we'll uh, try and tune the TV in. Is that it? I don't know. Let's um, switch this off and see if it goes away. Yes, that's close. Well, that looks like we have no working heads, doesn't it? That's the result you get when the heads are completely worn out. I'll... Um, Briefly clean the heads first in case uh, they got contaminated by that tape. I'm just running it now with no tape in it. Just confirm we get the same results. And also, because I've just cleaned the heads, um, running the heads can clean them, of course, because the, the windage helps to dry them. Right, I know there's a recording on this tape, albeit I know there's a small tracking error on it. Uh, it'll be a good start if we can get any kind of picture out of it. Aha! Picture! Check for sound. Right, now I know this tape's always had a bit of a tracking issue, so that's to be expected. So the main thing I need to fix, I think, well, apart from adding uh, AV output sockets, is I need to fix the rewind and maybe clean the tape path a bit more because the picture does seem to be better at the top of the picture than the bottom, which, even though this isn't a great tape, I think that, in, that might be uh, a tape path issue. So we'll clean the tape path. You don't get as many hints with the 1700 as you do with the 1502. 1502 has freeze frame. And, of course, that helps to eliminate a lot, because when the tape's not moving, you can see just how the tape path is responding. But um, no such option on this, because of the way they built the heads. Right, so I'll clean the path a bit, uh, and then I'll look at uh, the rewind problem. This is the most important guide on these type of machines, which is why they give you this whiz-bang tool here. So you can put this tool on this guide and rotate it and it helps clean the super important guide for you. The other end of the tool I think is used for presetting... No, I thought it was used for presetting these but actually they're twiddlers so I don't know what the other end was used for. I'm going to clean the tape path a bit more. Quite a lot of contamination on the... Uh lower drum around the back. Uh, I'm using a cotton bud rather than head cleaner stick in this particular case because it's a little easier to get in there but you need to make sure that the head tips are nowhere near that. Right, I'm going to select rewind without a tape in there and confirm that it attempts to rewind. Yeah, 
Yes. Uh, the lower spool, you could barely see it with the camera, but the lower spool is rotating that way. So it is attempting rewind. It's a lack of um, torque on there. So we'll look at the mechanism. Okay, uh, let's uh, take a look at the mechanism. I prefer to have the machine sat on its back, but ungainly, but it means that this panel opens out nicely and keeps out the way. Sometimes there are screws in these positions, sometimes not. Access is easy, stick your fingers in there. Well, this has uh, the wrong kind of drive belt installed here um, for the head drum. I'm surprised it works as well as it does with that belt in there. It's supposed to be a flat belt, so I'll change that one. And I also need to investigate why there's no rewind. So I'm going to power it up, switch it on, select rewind. So whichever path we have now for connecting to the reels is working but lack of torque so I just need to work out exactly which rubber surfaces are involved in this. Uh, this might actually be easier from the top. I'm fairly sure that most of the uh, real drive functions are performed with this idler here so I'm going to clean the surface of this bottom spool which is rewind and see if I can improve the surface on this idler and uh, try the rewind again. Applied some platen clean to that um, idler. Let's see if rewind is any better. And you can see from the tape counter that's rewinding really, really well. Really well indeed. No problem with that rewind. Let's try fast forward, or wind as they call it. Also equally working very well. Another task of course will be to fit audio video output connectors on this. Again that's something I've done before. You will watch my channel, you'll have seen me do that um, uh, twice before I think. So I make up a small board that sits underneath this panel and we can fit audio video output connectors in these blanks here. So right now I just want to confirm that uh, we have a good picture out of it. Uh, we have, have proven now that rewind and fast forward and everything works well. The reason I didn't get a picture from this tape was you can just about occasionally hear some very low speed uh, audio because of course it's uh, a 1500 recording, not a 1700, that's to say it's VCR rather than VCR LP. Silly me. So there we have the machine working quite satisfactorily with uh, a different tape. You can adjust the tracking and tracking bars come and go as you'd expect. So uh, that's not bad at all that. And it should give a slightly better result again when I fitted a AV port. So the circuit is one that we've uh, used before done by Stefan Hal Halmers, um, it's available on the internet and he proposed uh, a version with a uh, separate Lumo and Chroma for S-Video connection but actually I prefer it in the composite mode and let my uh, digital time-based correctors do the um, separation, Lumo and Chroma separation because they've got uh, digital uh, comb filters uh, and you have to, I've made a couple of small adjustments to his original circuit as well. So I'll do that later. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing us working on this uh, N1700. Um, I've been sent something else today. You may have seen in some of my previous videos that uh, I worked on uh, some circuit boards, very often branded uh, Whistlewood, which were used for extracting a pure digital audio signal from the very popular, uh, in the 80s, uh, PCM F1 format typically recorded on Betamax tapes and decoded on PCM F1 decoders 501, 601, 701 models. Uh, those boards are really hard to get and uh, Brian uh, who was uh, obviously much cleverer than me 
engineered his own uh, solution, uh, which works along similar lines, I believe, as the Whistlewood board. So he has his own, um, uh, there's a clock recovery circuit involving a phase lock loop. And he has sent me a couple of the circuit boards because uh, he doesn't need the project anymore. And it includes part of the components required to, to build them as well. I have to order some chips in though. Uh, so I'm gonna have some great fun building these and see if I can uh, fit one of these to my PCM F1 decoder because I already have a 501 and 701 with the whistleboard boards fitted and a 601 which includes its own uh, Sony uh, type uh, which actually isn't as good as the whistle ones, Whistlewood ones. So uh, we can work on those later. Please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology. Bye for now.